2023 is looking like a fantastic year for space games. These are the four upcoming most anticipated space games for 2023, based on the number of times they've been wishlisted. Starting off with Starfield, Bethesda's newest title. The exact release in 2023 is unknown, and whether we're going to see some sort of early access is also unknown at this point. It is an RPG, but it is much more ambitious than Bethesda's usual RPGs. Games like Skyrim and Fallout put your character on Earth or similar. Starfield does not. Starfield puts your character in space with the ability to visit up to a thousand different planets. And all of these planets are going to have something to explore. How much of these are going to be random, I currently don't know. Of course, you first start off with building your own character. And as you might be used to from Bethesda titles, you can go as extensive or as minimalistic as you see fit. You pick a couple of different traits and then eventually you can start your gameplay. As you're playing, you'll be coming across all sorts of NPCs and factions which will give you quests which you can pick up or ignore as your own taste goes. It is a sandbox, of course, and if you're perfectly content flying around in your ship and exploring planets, then that shouldn't be a problem. Now, much like you can customize your character, you can also customize your ship in this game. And that is going to impact how your ship flies, how your ship behaves, and what your combat capabilities are going to be. So building out your ship, building out your, uh, let's say, ground-based weaponry, these are all going to dictate how you play. And that, of course, also tandems with the type of skills that you pick. If you have, as you can see here, surveyed a particular spot on a planet, you can build your own colony. Now, this is a bit akin to what you could do in Fallout, but right now you can also have this thing get staffed. And that means you can potentially start mining resources here and expand your base even more. Customizing your own ship is something I'm very much looking forward to. Um, there are probably going to be all sorts of builds, and if Bethesda incorporates mod support, we will also probably be seeing a lot of mods so that you can start building your own ship out exactly the way that you want. With this being a Bethesda title, I think it's going to have a ton of replayability because there will be different stories for you to follow, different characters to build, different ways to run your ship, different ways to build out your ship, and of course, different planets for you to explore. Even on one playthrough, I rather doubt you're going to get through all thousand planets. So you'll have a lot of replayability value from this game. The next title is Kerbal Space Program 2. KSP1 came out in June 2011. Yes, we're that old. And KSP2 is coming on February 24th, 2023 in early access. There is a lot to unpack with Kerbal Space Program 2. Kerbal Space Program 1 allowed you to build rockets exactly as you wanted them. You could explore the Kerbal system, go to all sorts of planets, and with the support of mods, you could go and make your game exactly the way that you wanted it to be. Kerbal Space Program 2 does all that and more. More game elements will become available as we go through the early access. And one of the key features that they are going to add is multiplayer. You'll be able to fly together with your friends. Not necessarily the same ship at the same time, but how about each building a rocket and launching at the same time and seeing who can get to the moon first? ASP2 also comes with customizable parts. It comes with the ability to build colonies on other planets. And from those colonies, you'll be able to start building ships right there. Kerbal Space Program 1 was excellent, but you always had to go through launching from Kerbal. Unless you were using mods, that is. Kerbal Space Program 2 will allow you to use the colonies that you build to launch rockets from right there. Build your rovers locally and explore the planet. And once you've been everywhere, once you've seen everything in the Kerbal system, go interstellar. Because Kerbal Space Program 2 will have multiple star systems. This means you will always have something new to explore. And again, 
you can build a new Kerbal Space Center in that faraway galaxy. Getting there will also be easier, whereas in Kerbal Space Program 1, accelerating to a new burn, if you will, accelerating to a new maneuver could take a long time. With Kerbal Space Program 2, you can do that in a time acceleration, which will allow you to actually not have to do all sorts of things in the meanwhile while your game is still running and your ship is still accelerating. Kerbal Space Program 2 is a game I am very much looking forward to. I am probably going to sink a lot of time into this game. Especially with my friends, and if the game has as much longevity as I think it will, even with my own kids. I think my kids are going to be growing up with this game, and I'm very much looking forward to playing this with them. Another highly anticipated game and highly wishlisted game is Homeworld 3. This RTS is coming somewhere in the first half of 2023, or at least that's what it currently says on their Steam page. This is a fleet action game that takes place in 3D battlefields. This is an interesting question, of course. Why do most space games these days only have 2D battlefields? Why are we treating space like it's flat? Because it's not. And Homeworld 3 knows that and uses that so that you can attack from any vector. If you have a heavily entrenched enemy, you can attack them from above. If you have the opportunity to use your environment to your advantage, then do so. Because as you'll be seeing in a part of this trailer, you can go through tunnels and attack the enemy from a vector that they weren't expecting. Attack them from behind. Now, the environment, as much as you can use it, it can be a threat to you as well. The game will feature particle storms and asteroid fields, which will make your life a bit more dangerous, and which can fairly swiftly change the tide of the battle. What I really like about what I know so far about Homeworld 3 is that fleet persists from mission to mission. As you're going through the campaign, the ships remember what happened. If you have scars, as they put it on the page, then the scars will persist. Damaged ships remain damaged. And that means that you cannot be very frivolous when it comes to your ships. Make them count. Make sure you keep them alive. Because if you lose them, well, rebuilding them might be possible, but it'll probably also be very costly. This game comes with a single player campaign, which you can also play in a co-op mode. Now, this is something you don't very often see these days. Co-op campaigns. Yet, it is one of the areas where I had most fun. So, having a game come out where you can actually play single player against the AI with your friends in a campaign is something I very much welcome. The game also comes with more regular multiplayer features in the form of a 1v1 mode, free-for-all and team battles. So you have your pick of the litter what type of multiplayer experience you're looking for. One thing that very much interests me about Homeworld 3 is their unique use of space derelicts. Ranging from stations to abandoned spaceships, these are, as they themselves put it, bringing terrain-based features or terrain-based combat into a fully 3D space. It is something you just don't see that much when it comes to space games. This combination of both having a 3D sphere and a terrain-based setting. Normally it's open world, it's asteroid fields, it's just space. There's generally not that much in it. But Homeworld 3 both uses this as a background to set the stage, as as a strategical and tactical element that you can exploit. And I think that's a really clever choice. How well that works, of course, remains to be seen. Finally, we have Falling Frontier. This is another space RTS, but it works in a very different way from Homeworld 3. It is a procedurally generated star system that you will be able to conquer. As opposed to Homeworld 3, you'll be doing this in strictly single player. Falling Frontier is set in 2245. And if you're a fan of The Expanse, then this game is going to make you feel right at home. The background music is going to be phenomenal. 
It is made by an artist called Scott Buckley and the background music that you're listening to for this video is by him as well. I highly recommend that you check him out, link down below in the description. Now in Falling Frontier, logistics are the key. Your empire, your space adventures, your warfare cannot happen without a proper logistics system. So you'll be setting up not only mining outposts, but also resupply stations for fuel, supplies and ammunition storages. I think such an intricate and detailed logistics system also gives you a lot of opportunities. Because it means that if you are fighting a stronger foe, you might not be able to engage their fleet head on. But with a couple of raiding ships, you can hit hard at their logistics, impeding their ability to field larger fleets to a position that will threaten you. Speaking of ships, there are 20 different ship types and you can customize all of these, both their internals and their externals, their armaments and their components alike. And in combat, these can be knocked out one by one. So this way you can dictate what you want your ships to target and how you want to go about destroying the enemy's ship. When it comes to ship to ship combat, it is not necessarily the way that the bigger ship always wins. Smaller ships might be able to outmaneuver bigger ships and ships in ambush can also spring a trap on much, much larger prey. How well your ships perform is also very much down to what sort of crew and captain they have. This is another immersive element that I'm looking forward to because it means that having that one captain, that specific navigator or that excellent engineer on your ship could make all the difference. In case you're looking for different scenarios to play, you can, because the game is going to have an in-game scenario editor, which will allow you to build a scenario or even a campaign exactly to your own liking and share that across with other players. And this way you will also be able to download their scenarios, their campaigns and their adventures. And with this, the replayability of this game and the continuous ability to seek out new adventures should be really high. So, between Starfield, Kerbal Space Program 2, Homeworld 3 and Falling Frontier, I think 2023 is going to be a really good year when it comes to space games. There are of course a lot more coming out, some of them might not even have been announced, but I am also looking forward to seeing what you are looking forward to. Let me know down below in the comments what titles have your attention, and this way we can all find out more about upcoming space games together. Thank you for watching and good luck on your future space adventures.